Okay, now we're going to do part two of the uh, building the content management system. Last week we made the login logout system. Now this isn't the registration system, so we haven't made any new users. This requires that you already be logged into the system. Um, but we've got the section where uh, once you log in, tries to throw you into the admin page. If you're an admin, you can stick around. If you're not, then it just cascades down into the my area and assumes you're a user and then you can stay there and do whatever it is you're supposed to. So there's two things I want to try and accomplish today. One is the home page that's going to list out all of the different animals that we're, we're going to have. And then I want to see if I can build us uh, some of the admin section that's going to control, uh, add, and delete uh, the pets. So first off, I need my main index. Oops, it's in the wrong place. index.php. I don't have a template, but I'm just going to say uh, welcome to the pet shelter. Make that our h1. Here are the latest critters. And so what I want is just go to the database, give me the, the, top, the latest 10 animals that are in the database, and we'll just display their info here. Um, I have a connection to the database. We did that the other day. And now I need to add a record set to go and grab that info. And that's the advanced way. But I'm going to do the simple, and then I'll show you advanced. So we don't do that very often. So I'm going to call this RS Pets. It's not the sh uh, go to the shelter database. Go to the pets table. I'm just going to go ahead and tell it to select everything. Uh, I'm not going to not users, pets. I'm not going to filter, uh, so we don't really care about that. But then I just want to sort date created descending because the, the a higher value, higher numerical value is given to dates the further into the future. In the past, they're lower value. Test that. We don't have anything in the database, but it ran. If then everything's working, I don't have any screw ups with my database. I just it, it works. Uh, when you go to advanced. You can actually type in your full SQL statement, and it can be anything. Um, you can also create variables down here, which I will get to when we get to one of the other sections. And they're pretty useful. But if you need to, you can go look at the structure and add part of it to your select statement or something like that. Um, i got to rebuild that now. Shoot. So RS Pets. That's date created descending. That's it. Test. That's still right. Good. Okay. So now that record set is under bindings. I'm allowed to pull out each of those different um, things onto the page. Um, one of the things that I realized we didn't have was a, a column for images. So we probably want to be able to do that. That's going to require some file upload stuff. Um, uh, to make happen properly, which we might be able to do. Dreamweaver does not have any file upload capability into it, even though it's not that difficult. Um, so I'm going to have to go to my pet structure. Oh, I think it's being a punk again. Really? Okay. Computer needs a restart when, when that happens, but that's okay. Um, I'll just do everything without it. So each Creature has the we'll name. Age. Uh, we'll put the description here. We'll make these fairly small with some CSS. That'll be the description. Um, oh, we probably need species right here um, and at the end of this I'll put shots and that can simply be we can actually code that to be something like a uh, um, a yes no an if statement that says if it's if it's yes then we can show a graphic um, and so you have like a little injector um, something or other this is the stuff that I want to 
um, repeat on each one. I think what might actually make a lot of sense is if we put that in its own div. When I get to my CSS, this will make it a lot easier. I can actually have give this a class of some kind of, and then reuse it all over the place. Class equals animal or something like that. Now I can select that whole div under server behaviors. I can repeat that one ten times. Now I'm always going to have the top ten pets on the on the top of the page. Dreamweaver uh, sometimes doesn't let me get down to the next line. Uh, when you do this, you should always also have under insert. I need data pagination. So this thing. Put that little table with the two columns and then put display a record count. And what this ends up doing is giving me the nice little nothing happened yet. Didn't it didn't find any data, so it just says record one to zero of zero. Um, but as if I go into the database and actually populate that, I'll I'll start to see that info. So this is how I'll be able to check if things are working, um, at the very least, as I enter data into the database. So now what I want to do is get the admin section or the my section. It doesn't really matter which one we do. Um, we'll start with the index, at the admin section. Under the administration, there's usually there, you basically want to follow the rules of CRUD: create, read, update, delete. Um, every page is going to have read on it because it has to read something, it has to select something out of the database. But we need to be able to. Um, oh, we're going to need two sections to this, aren't we? We're going to need to be able to manage our users, and then we're going to need to need to be able to manage the articles. So what we might end up doing is. Index is going to be all about users, and then we'll create an index underscore pets. And so this one, users, is where we are. But if we need to, I, and we could dress this up like little tabs or something so you know which one you're on a little bit easier. But this one will go to, actually, why don't we do this? Pets.php. And we'll make users go to users.php. We can combine them. I think this will make it a little bit easier to, to figure out. So control D will duplicate and we'll start with users.php. So the index page is just all the options you're allowed to do. Um, I usually also make my indexes into a kind of dashboard so you can see how many users there are, how many pets there are, how many of the different things there are, if there's messages waiting for you, things like that. Um, so we're going to be under users. Add a new user is always a useful feature and then we need to list all of the users here in a nice repeating table. At the end of each one we can give them the option to delete a user or to edit a user. So I need a database, not a repeat region, I need a record set. And this will be RS users. This one's from the users table. And I'll just, uh, I don't need much, just first, last, and probably level. We'll never do there. Yeah, I guess we'll get it all then. I don't really want to filter, but I do might want to sort. Let's do this. Uh, let's do sort by last name, ascending. It's only going to be me for right now. And click OK. In this one, I will create a little table. Common. This doesn't have to be done with the table, but it is tabular data, so it, it works out fairly well. Um, I think this is enough. So it will be email, name, level, let me add one more, 
two more to that. And then you can either edit or delete a user. So there's their email address, there's their first name, and I'll just put the last name in there, and their user level. Did we store user levels as the letter A? Are we thinking about that for something else? I don't think this is going to let me see what's in there now. Varchar 6. Okay. That's fine. So it's going to be the full word admin or whatever. Uh, to make this a repeating region, you have to select the row, the table row, and then you can simply... I don't expect this to have too many um, options or too many users. So I'd say you can probably just get away with doing all of them on one table. Click OK. So let me see if it'll let me in. And where to have it? Okay. So it lets me in. Ah, come back. What's it doing? Oh, um, apparently in the wrong type. I'm, uh, I can't get into the database. Oh. Maybe I can. Okay. So I was an admin. I am an admin. Why did I get kicked out into my? Strict access to page should be an admin. I am an admin. Users is the same way, right? Yeah. I just copied this when I created this page. Uh, I'll go back and fix that in, in a few minutes. To create the edit page, um, I'm going to have to create a new page. D, and that'll be users underscore, actually dash is probably better, user underscore edit. I will make it users just so they're all the same. And edit user. In order to edit, you have to pull some record set out of the database in order to populate a field with it so they can make any changes and then you save it right back to the database. So whenever you edit, you've got to pull it, something out of the database. Actually, I should back up because I need to create this link under edit so that it goes to the, to the edit page. To do this properly, send them to admin, send them to the edit page. This is where I have to do that parameter stuff. Remember this from last semester? I have to tell it which user I want to edit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this value ID and I will go and get their email from the record set. What this ends up doing is this is going to be okay, lets me in. Do you see the down here? It's got the full address question mark ID equals the email address of the person you want to edit. So when I go to this page, for some reason Opera hides it from you. I can use, the, in this page, I can tell it to get the ID and go and grab that person's info out of the database. That's how I get my, for, my primary key. So now I can go to users edit and in this page, in the record set, I'm going to do rs edit user from the users, I'll grab everything. Filter where the email equals the URL parameter, and I called it ID. So it's going to go into that, go into the URL and grab the email address of whoever it is we're looking for. This is searching by a primary key, so this should only give me one result. There should be no reason to sort when you're only grabbing one thing. Let me see what it does. Um, if I put in my email address. I don't think I finished typing it, so I didn't type it correctly. But it's working. I'm not getting an error. That's good. 
Now here's where I like to cheat a little bit. When you're doing, um, I'm going to have to change the font size so you can actually see this. When you're doing all of this um, PHP stuff, all of this stuff behind the scenes seems to make utterly no sense. There are a couple of things that I want you to, to be aware of um, and things that I want you to make into snippets that I think would be very, very useful uh, if I create a new PHP folder. I'm not sure if I can put this. There we go. The first one is this function right here called get SQL value string. This it goes all the way down to here. I think it actually goes to here. Um, it's inside an if statement. What this does is it will take the values, the things that come in from the from the get or from the post or sessions or whatever it is that the user go, information the user types in somewhere um, and it'll sanitize it. It'll run the strip slashes, uh, get magic quotes, um, real escape string. These get rid of any uh, HTML, um, PHP, or SQL commands inside of it. Uh, it doesn't get rid of HTML. But PHP and SQL, it'll it'll try and rip those out. Or more likely, what it'll do is instead of seeing, um, oh god, I have to do this. It's going to be. I think it'll do this. It'll turn it into stuff like this. So when you see, you'll get the uh, alt code for every little thing. Um, so that way, who cares if they actually put PHP code in there? It can't actually run. It'll look good on the, the final screen, but when it's in the database, it'll be perfectly um, harmless. Um, sorry, the very first block of code that they've got is just the connection to the database. That's just an include file. It's actually a require, and all of that's the database username and stuff. This one is a command to restrict access to the page, make sure that you have to be an admin to get in. Oh, I'm not too worried about that one. But usually what I suggest is that you actually take this function, and I'm going to add it as a snippet. And I'm going to call it SQL Sanitizer. You don't really have to know too much about how it works just yet. But underneath of that, this is the SQL command. And let's see, this is actually a slightly smaller than what it looks like. This right here is a variable. Call name RS edit user at set to negative one. Then it goes and sees if get ID has been set. If it has, it replaces negative one with get ID. So this is basically just putting a uh, default value into it and then going to see if the actual value is out there. It's a little bit more secure, a little bit more professional way of doing it. Then under here, we've got a couple of things that happen. Um, this line goes out and selects the database. It just basically says, let's go talk to the database, con, shelter, all of this stuff is actually in uh, the connections. Host name, con, shelter, um, database, con, shelter, uh, and all of that is database and con. Yeah, these just go out and tell the computer, go use this database. Underneath of that, this is a just a text uh, variable that's going to hold the SQL command. Now, if you remember the sprint f and get SQL value string, this is going to try and sanitize everything that goes into the um, SQL for us, and I can break this out just a little bit. The first thing is this sprint f command. It encompasses the entire thing. What there's actually here is this is a value, and then this ends up being a value. So sprint f needs two things. And actually, this one is kind of amazing. For every percent s that you add to this, you have to put another comma something. And what it does is it will, I'm going to get rid of that because that will actually screw things up. Wherever it sees percent %s, it takes this, runs the command, and puts the output right here. 
but so it's gonna this is that function from up at the top it's going to then take this um, whatever it gets out of the ID and turn it into text and what that does is this is the function here there's one called text it takes this it does a few things to it really what it does is as long as it's not null it puts single quotes around it and it runs through all the other um, uh, sanitizer commands what I like to do is to take this and also make it a snippet and that's a insert block and that's going to be um, select statement whenever I need to select data I just um, if Dreamweaver is being a punk pop this in just put it into the page and then you can go and rename your um, wherever it says RS something you can just rename all of these and you've got a template for as many select statements as you might need to put on a page so if you want to have the user's information and all the pets and the comments loaded you can have multiple select statements on the same page um, as I start to get into more nuanced and more customized websites I tend to break Dreamweaver's built-in buttons and they don't work quite as nicely as they should anymore so I have to use uh, this sort of template all right um, so getting back to this this was going to be how to edit the uh, user oh we'll get one more out of this under data I can actually tell it to go and update a record use the form wizard I did have one I screwed up I didn't change anything did I but no oh, I screwed up something because Dreamweaver can't find this function anymore so that means kill it and pop it back in oh I forgot to add this to the snippet you always have to um, free the results of your, you always have to kill the connection to your database once you're done with it. It's actually not as necessary anymore. PHP is better about cleaning up databases when it's done with it at the end of a page, um, but it's still considered good form. Uh, so let me put this back in. Record set, RS, edit user, users table, I'll grab everything user email equals the URL parameter of ID. There it is. Now I can update my record. I know I'm moving fast. Um, are you following up? Keeping up? Okay. Once I've got the record set back in, I need to build the form that will update it. I like using the wizard because then I don't have to hand build the stupid form. Um, I want this one to update users. The unique key is the user ID. It is not a number. After updating, we'll send them back to the users. And we want them to be able to edit. Well, if email is the primary key, it's usually a bad idea to let them edit that. Um, so I'm actually going to take that one out. Uh, we don't want them to change the date created. Uh, now, this page is under my admin section. And here I do want to be able to change what their user level is. So. I can change how this displays when it builds the form. This is actually going to be a menu. And I can say my first item is they can either be admins or they can be users. Do we have another one? I think we're going to have. Yeah. Oh, and there's also this from database. You can get have another record set that pulls like all the pets, all the species. That's what I think I'll end up doing at one point, a little bit later. Uh, password, first name, last name. This is pretty standard. I think that's good. Yeah, whatever they, whatever user level they're set to, you, that one will automatically be selected in the menu. Okay, let's see what it does. Aha. 
I always hate how this looks. First name, last name, pass, password, and level. The only other thing I might want to have on here, since it's not actually displayed, is their email. Hello? What's going on? Let me put the email in. Ah! What's going on? Put the stupid thing in. There we go. Okay, so now it's that'll run uh, in Opera. I can go to my users. I can edit my info, and now I can become Bob. Um, oh shoot! The getting the password is probably actually a really bad idea because it's encrypted. So if you were to change this, you might not know what you were encrypting it to. Um, so I would just say, let's take it out. We'll just say you're not allowed to change your password for, for now. Um, when I did that, that's going to screw some stuff up. Uh, the update record is going to be... Not you, it is looking for the update command. Here we go. So the SQL update commands are a little bit, or kind of, the, they're actually not quite as much to them. Um, this one's just the font is still incredibly large. If you do this on your own computer, you're going to see it's pretty small. Sorry, I know this has suddenly got much, much smaller. Um, so it uses that same sprint F thing again, but it has to throw in a lot more this time. So it's a simple update, update the user's table, set user first to whatever it is they typed in. It's going to come in through the post, through text, as text. Password, I can actually delete that one as long as I delete the subsequent command that sends it in. Otherwise, it would actually put it wouldn't know what to do with this one. It would say couldn't be found and it would just be nothing. That's that's as complicated as it is to take stuff out. Um, and what I usually recommend is here it is. Okay, so this builds the SQL statement. This is almost identical to what um, the SQL or the select statement does. This selects a database and then result one is run the query or die. I love that command. Um, when you're doing lists of people, when you're just doing a select statement, it you build the query, you run the query or die. When you're done, you get a gigantic, unreadable, multi-dimensional array back from the database. And what you end up doing is MySQL fetch array turns it into a, a very nice, pretty, easy to read associative array. array. Um, and then it also does one more nice thing. It tells you how many um, rows are in it. So you always have a total value set to a, um, a, a variable. Do you want to close the other door? Okay. Um, when you're updating, like I just did in the users, you don't really, once it's updated, it's done. The database doesn't really tell, it might tell you um, it was successful or not, but it's not going to give you a, a giant array of information back. So all you do is set this variable equal to this, and it ends up just being true or false. Um, the same with insert and delete. This one I like to save as my update snippet. Statement. 
I just did something wrong. That's my select statement. I think I just edited that one. Uh, I did new snippet. Update statement. There we go. So now I've got these in and I know there's all this other stuff in here, but this is actually the same sanitizer function as before. Dreamweaver will actually drop it into every single page. That's one thing I don't like. I would rather have this off in an include file so it's only there once. Um, if you want to, you could also take this. I don't do this very often. Oh, no, this one I do. Um, whenever you deal with session variables, you always have to start them. Start session. Um, we're not dealing with session variables yet. We'll get to that when we get to the my stuff. All right, so I've kind of shown you under the hood. I know you don't understand everything about it yet, but this will be update user. And I do want to make sure that that still works. If I edit this, I change myself to a user, and then change it back to an admin. Good. Now what if I want to delete somebody? Um, yeah, you're going to go back here. It's pretty much the same process. And you, users, delete is going to go to what's the name of this, that page? Going to have to be. Users on dash delete dot php. I have to do the exact same thing I did for edit. And I'll show you that under the hood. Increase the font size a little bit so you can see again. This is the edit link. A href equals users dash edit dot php slash or question mark id equals php echo out the user's email. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and then there's the word edit, and then you close the, um, the thing. Really, all I need to do is this. That's what the whole um, parameters thing actually does, is it tells you, let's add a parameter, and we should set it equal to something in the, in the database. And so what it's going to do here is just going to print out the email in both of these. If I view the source, sorry, this is really tiny now, but users edit PHP, just putting that same email address after both of them. PHP is just echoing it out. So then we have to build the delete page that actually does the deletion, but unfortunately, the way Dreamweaver works, um, it has to be as soon as the page is created, as soon as you access the page, it'll delete it. Um, and it's not the most useful way to do it. So what I prefer to do is what I did in the CMS last semester is make a page that says, are you sure? And then if they click yes, that takes them to a, a processor page that they never actually see that does the deletion and then sends them right back to the user's page. Otherwise, they can click cancel, which is just another form that just behaves like a button, a link that sends them back to users without doing invoking anything else. So duplicate this. This is going to be users dash delete. So this page, I would like to display the user that they just clicked on because I like to pretend that my users are all idiots and they just clicked on something and have probably already forgotten <laughs> because I do that. <laughs> so this means that I need to grab, I mean, let me uh, save this. When I go to this Are You Sure page, I need to grab the ID again. The nice thing about this is that 
since I already did that in user's edit, we actually allowed to copy and paste it between them. It was the exact same thing that I did. Unfortunately, this one's called edit user. I'm deleting. Not that it makes that much difference. The computer, no one's ever going to see this, but I'm going to change this to delete user. And whenever you change the name of that, it does a find and replace automatically. And it's actually going to bring up just regular find and replace with the stuff already popped in. Replace all. Now my record set is just called delete user. Okay. So now my user is, he's got a first name and a last name, delete user. So I'll do something like this. There we go. There we go. So we can delete Bob, me, who I'm now Bob Marr. Um, and now I get to tell it yes or no. So I need, I'm actually going to drop two forms onto the page. Under forms. The bottom one's easy. The bottom one is going to be a button that says cancel. And all this form does is go right back to the users.php. It's effectively an ahref. Doesn't really do anything. The form doesn't have any real function. The other one is going to be our delete button. And I want that one to say delete. And from here, I'm going to send it over to this processor page and I'm going to give that, call it users-delete2.php. The web has this weird thing. When I, if I just link over to that page, it has suddenly has no idea which user I was using. I have to send to that next page what user I'm supposed to delete. In the same way that I sent through the ID and the URL, I've got to send it to this next page. With a form, you can do that through post. Remember using post? So in this one, the best way to do that is I really don't want the user to even see it or pay attention to it. I want to do it for them. I don't want them to have to type in my the username or the email address again. So what I'm going to do is type in create a hidden field. I know that was really fast. Here it is. Input name equals ID. So it's going to be post ID. Type is hidden. They'll never see it on the page. But it's there as though they typed it in, but I typed it in for them. And its value is going to be the user's email that they just tried to, are trying to delete. Okay, so now when they click delete, this page doesn't actually exist. And I'm terrified to click on this because I'm going to delete my only entry. Um, file, new, blank PHP. No one's actually going to see this PHP. It's going to come up, it's actually going to be processed on the back end and then immediately send them over to a different page altogether. They, they will never actually receive the HTML in this, excuse me, in this page. So, but I still want to make sure of one, excuse me, of one thing. I really want to make sure that they are logged in when they, um, when they see this, when they try to act, access this page, and they better be an admin. If I didn't put this on there and someone knew the address, they could just create a fake form and have it go to this and delete whoever they knew just by their email address. So I want to make sure that can't happen. Restrict access, you got to be an admin, otherwise I'm going to kick you out to the login. Oh, I just haven't saved it yet. Admin user delete two, and this is all that code that checks to see if they're nice and valid. Otherwise, it kicks them out. Then, under server behaviors, I can delete the record. Oh shoot, no, not yet. I need. Uh, oh wait, yes, I can. 
I'm sorry, forget that. I think I can. Primary key value, first check if variable is defined. It's a form variable from the other page, the hidden value, I called it ID. I tried to keep it the same across everything. The, if you're accessing anything, I try to make it ID, whether it's post or get. It's going to be from the shelter, table users, primary column is email, it's not numeric, primary key value is form ID, after deleting, send them back to admin users. OK. The other thing that you might want to do, oh, and by the way, this will actually follow the almost identical pattern to the update. Delete SQL equals sprint F. Here's a command. There's that percent %s thing, which is replaced by a get SQL. It runs the command, and then there's a variable that stores, that just makes it happen. So the update is actually pretty much, you can use it for the insert or delete as well. Oh, the other thing I kind of recommend, just to save you a tiny bit of file space, you don't need any of the HTML on this. It makes no sense to, because no one will ever see it. I will test this as soon as I'm done creating the add new user feature, <laughs> so that I don't accidentally delete myself from the database. Um, but yes, now this scary little button should work. Cancel. Let's add a new user. Adding is probably the simplest way to do this, or the simplest feature. I'm going to do user under user dash oh, oh crap dash add users dash add. Users add a new user by going to this page. This page will be add user. Um, I might recommend that you actually always use this cancel that you have it on almost every page because people might have gone there and not meant to. Um, I can even put that on the edit page. It's just going to send them right back. Um, so adding a user, fairly simple. Um, you do not need a record set for this. You are inserting into the database brand new. Don't really care what they um, have. So I'm going to do the, not that. No, go away. I need data, insert record form wizard. And I want to add into the users. After we're done, we'll send them back over to the users page so they can see what they did. Um, date created will be automatic level. I need to build that menu again. And we don't really have a. I'm going to set user as the top one because that's most likely what you're going to want to make people. So if I can give them one less thing to do. Um, the password will SHA that in the, in the database uh, once this is in because it's not going to work properly. Um, and I didn't make it a, a password field so that you can see what it is. Email. Pretty this up just a second. First name, last name, password, level. Insert user. And cancel. Oh, there was a cancel. Or cancel the cancel. I don't know what that is. Go away. Looking at code again. This one, not that one. This is probably going to look a little bit familiar. Insert SQL. There's the insert command. There's a whole bunch of percent %s's. Runs it. Result one. Yeah. So the uh, at, uh, insert, delete, and update commands are almost identical. At the select is kind of its own thing. So I might actually be more appropriate under my snippets to call this
create, update, delete. This is my cut statements. And select is my er statement. Okay, let's see if I can oh I need to I need to SHA this. The best place that I've found to do this is in the um, SQL statement. Um, mostly because when we do all of when I did it the other day with the login page, I made the I did the added SHA one in the SQL, not in the PHP. So I kind of want to keep the database doing it that way. If I did it in the PHP in the, to begin with, I'd stick with PHP. There's a very little likelihood that those two are going to come up with different SHAs, but just in case one or the other gets infected or corrupted, I don't have half my SHAs being controlled in SQL and half of them controlled by PHP. Let's just do it all together. Um, here's the fun part. So it's going to throw an email first last pass. Email first last pass. Dreamweaver is no longer going to be able to understand this. It's one of the annoying things is that uh, it still does for the moment. If I close this and bring it back up, it usually doesn't. It does. No, uh, the yeah I still get that. Huh. Cool. I will say that I'm absolutely positive if you make go back into this and make any changes, it'll erase the SHA-1. I'm positive that'll happen. Uh, so if I just change this to user 2 or something. Yeah, SHA's gone now. So let me undo that. And Shot is back. Okay, we're safe. All right, now let's see if I can add somebody. This will be Bob at Hagerstown. Um, let me get a different password just so that we I know what's going on. And it can make him whatever user level I want. Make him an admin. Insert. There's Bob. I can go in here, I can change his name to Steve and change demote him to a user because we don't like him anymore. And then when I'm ready, I can delete it. Let's see if this works. Delete. He's gone out of the database. Now, the major difference between this and what I'll do next week and showing you the my stuff, it's almost identical, but virtually everything is going to have a where clause on it. All of my SQL statements, where uh, Author equals the currently logged in user, which is which is created during the login uh, as a session. So we have to have that added into the mix. Um, yeah, and actually before that, I'll go over the the whole process of adding this whole thing for pets. In fact, I don't think it would be too hard to just make this one table and then, then make this table over here on the right users and then pets. Um, I could probably do this all on one page. That might be a little bit nicer. We'll see. Um, any questions? Cool.